Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm in the Artisti service bay and pretty excited because we've got a brand new um, Lamazocco Classic S3 group here and a Classic S2 group as well, which are going out to some lucky customers. But I thought I'd take the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into what these machines uh, have as new technology when compared to the old Classic, which we've been so familiar with for many years. It's been the backbone of the industry and definitely built the coffee industry here in Australia. So here at Artisti, we use Lumbazocco for all of our premium cafes. Uh, we feel that it gives the, the best profile and flavour taste to our coffee. And we, when we roast, we always match to what Lumbazocco has to offer. So when we start to see um, a classic, uh, like the, the Lumbazocco classic being changed, we do get excited because it allows us a few more parameters to be able to play with. So I'm going to run through a few of those things. Uh, we'll just highlight what the original classic had. Um, uh, versus the new Classic S from an outside perspective and then we'll take the lids off and jump inside and talk a bit more about the tech that's inside them. So first of all we'll look at the, the original Classic. So this one here has had a couple of upgrades over the years. We've definitely got the Kronos keypads which we want to be able to time shots. So that was a great little um, uh, addition that happened a couple of years ago um, but we do know that they're not as accurate as some of the new machines. It was like taking a digital switch or a digital timer and tacking it onto an analog machine. So it was great for us to give a measurement but probably not as accurate as what some of the new machines have. Um, overall you can see we've definitely changed a little bit of the, the cosmetics. Um, we've got a two-part drip tray here. Um, now we've got some new style drip trays um, but they've still kept the very similar classic kind of look. And really from there, that's where it starts to separate very quickly. You can see that we've gone to the three button style um, like a PB has. We've got inbuilt digital displays. Um, this is how you actually access the menu as well. Um, we've got new style quarter term steam taps. These actually are standard from like the PB or, or the new GB5s, which is great because the original classics, uh, they were, you get jammed on every now and then. Uh, which is a little bit challenging. So the quarter turn was amazing. Uh, and if you actually held your milk um, up after you'd finished frothing, you could suck a little bit of milk into those taps. So we've definitely increased serviceability by going to a quarter turn steam tap. Um, fundamentally, um, inside the machines, they're still double boiler. They've got the same style pump uh, and we can still change the temperatures of the boilers if we need to, both the steam boiler and the front brew boiler. So they're a multi-boiler unit still and they're still running 20 amps of power um, but really that's where we start to to say okay they look similar there's a couple of light changes and um, we're, oh, we're missing the we've got the water level probe here um, for the boiler which is handy um, you know if we had a service issue and we asked the customer do they have any water in their boiler they better see the line um, or if they can't see any line we know it's totally empty that is missing on the the new classic s so um, when we checked into that also, there's no um, tap which actually allows you to mix cold water and the hot water together to set the temperature of your hot tap. So um, you get that on higher end models in the PBs and so on. Um, other than that, it's all pretty similar until we start to open these things up. So let's take the lid off both of them and I'll have a quick look in the Classic and then we'll tell you what's new in the Classic S. The first thing to note about the Classic S is there is this cover here. Um, on the original Classic it had some holes, but you could still spill a little bit of sugar or um, you know, if you dropped a coffee in there, it would still get inside the machine. So at least now um, they're going to divert that water and not let it get on the main components. So that's a, a great um, addition. Um, a lot of the other Lamazocos now do have a similar sort of cover, um, just trying to look after the electronics. Right, so when we have a look inside the, the Classic, um, we've got to remember the Classic was built, um, oh gee, many years ago, I think around 2004, maybe a little bit earlier. So over the years, it's had things added to it, but 
um, predominantly the main way that it worked was this, through this contactor, which would turn the elements on and off. Um, they can get quite noisy. If you hear them clack, you know they're on the way out. Um, you've got one level probe here for your water, um, and it does have a digital PID um, controller still for this boiler, um, which is underneath the machine. Um, that's doing the front brew boiler. The rear boiler is still controlled by a pressure stat in the back corner here. So pretty common pressure stats. Um, you basically screw them up and down. And once they re reach um, about 1.2 to uh, maybe up to two bar maximum, um, the element will cut out. So it's a manual process to measure that rear steam and essentially give you the hot water for your hot tap. Um, that's a big change when we look at the next machine. Um, inside here, this one's actually had the upgraded switches, which is great. So the safety cutouts for the element, uh, if they overheat, um, we've upgraded that one, but traditionally they were quite a small little thermostat in there or safety switch. Um, what else to note? When things get bolted into this machine, we weren't really thinking about serviceability. So being able to remove things, it can be a bit challenging to get access to, you know, the solenoids or remove a panel um, or even get access to maybe the hot water tap here as well. So across the board, beautifully well made machines, very consistent with their saturated groups. Um, but again, they're quite a few years old. So let's have a look at the Classic S and I'll show you some of the key things that have been really upgraded to make it, uh, I guess, into this century. So the first thing to note is the big contactor has been removed. So it looks like there is um, basically a solid state or a digital um, control now of the rear and the front boilers. Um, yes, this is a beautiful clean machine. Um, we tried to clean the old classic up the best we could. Um, but when you start to look deeply into this top boiler, there's a few things we've got to look at. We do have the new, um, as I said, uh, element cutouts, which is great. This is the new anti-vacuum valve. So a lot of machines um, used to have like a little pin that you could hit up and down, but this is the new one, which has a, an internal spring. They say they don't need to be replaced as often, so that's gonna save a few dollars in the servicing. Um, it's got two level probes now, so a max and a minimum, which is great. So um, that'll help um, with element failures. We've got our safety blow off valve here. It's now covered, and if it does go off, it's not gonna hit the cups or, or make a mess out the top of the machine. It'll be now safe and then go down a waste tube into um, the drain below. Then we've got our digital probe for the actual water temperature. So that is what we can use to measure the temperature of the water and the steam in the rear boiler and adjust that. So much more accurate uh, and, and controllable. Um, we've still got the same inlet solenoids here for hot water, the same piping that's coming through um, up to the steam taps, but all of these now are um, stainless steel on the steam taps, where in the old classics they were um, all copper. So um, hopefully they can be a bit more durable and maybe last a bit longer and, and less prone to corrosion if you buy the sea like us. As that comes up, it goes straight into the new quarter turn steam taps. So that is definitely a huge um, upgrade. So it locks out, it's the same as what's in the, in the PB. This screw, grub screw here allows us to, to lock it out. Um, but the whole tap can be removed and serviced. That is the easiest um, and the best thing that they've done from, from the PB up and now it's in the Classic S. So a couple of screws on the top and on the bottom, um, you can isolate your steam tap and we can remove that whole valve and rebuild it very easily. With the original Classic, you had to um, take it apart from the actual chassis. So that's a huge plus. And now they come standard with the anti-vacuum valve here. So uh, original Classics didn't have this. As they progressed in time, you could um, add it as a modification. But essentially that takes any of the extra moisture that's built up when you're purging before or after you're frothing, and it'll dump that bit of water down into your um, drain box. So uh, a great um, addition there. With the hot water tap, um, you can now remove that whole bracket. It's so easy now just to be able to undo a couple of screws at the back, take out that hot water solenoid and replace it. It was a little bit tricky on the original Classic because it was bolted through the actual chassis. Um, looking at the top of the group heads, all of those are pretty much the same. Um, and le yep, there's nothing there. If you look at a PB, they do have all of their group solenoids and everything running through the top group caps. Um, we would have loved to have seen that in the Classic S, 
but look, it's a cost and it does, you know, we've got to have a, a reason as to why there is a difference between a Classic S and a PV. So that means that the um, group head solenoids and the restrictors are still down in underneath the brew heads, um, the same as the original Classic. So if you do need to access the in behind this panel, in under here, and probably still a little bit challenging to, to change. So haven't dug into them yet. Um, that's probably the one thing that we were a bit surprised about. We, we wanted to get access to those restrictors because that is something that's uh, a little bit challenging uh, through um, coffee machines these days. Um, then when we look at the back of our keypads, we've got obviously the new style keypads um, with far, far more digital control. Now, while I'm on the, the menu and, and the control here, um, I'll, I'll be honest in saying it's a little more challenging and probably not as intuitive to other machines. You know, I've been able to jump on um, a PB or a KB90, or even when we were down at Mice and we had to work on the mod bar, I could just jump in and work on that menu. Unfortunately, the Classic S um, doesn't fit that same uh, platform. The one thing we noted when we first turned this on is the machine will turn on, but not heat up. So you do have to um, activate it by pressing one of these buttons. It's in this false standby mode. So once you do that, um, it will then start to heat up. If you then try and access the menu, there are two different menus, um, like a, an easy access menu, and then there's the full on menu. If you get into it and you don't have this cheat code sheet, you're gonna get lost straight away. Because there's only three characters that you can see on the menu, um, it, you have to follow these codes and, and work out what you're actually changing. So there's, there's a couple of lists there and an alarm code set. We tried to work our way through this um, without having the coding, and then when we got the code, it was still a bit tricky. So the way around this is to ensure that you've got the machine uh, in an area which has Wi-Fi. And this is where this machine really does step up from the Classic S. Get yourself your, your iPhone, um, download the Lumazoco um, Pro app. Here we go. The Pro app looks like this one here. And once you've got that loaded, you've, you can connect the um, coffee machine to the app and you can control everything in this machine. So this is where you want to be um, accessing your shot volumes, the temperature of the front brew boiler, the rear brew boiler, um, all the different settings, standbys, your times, the whole lot. You can adjust it through here. So I wouldn't spend too much time trying to play with this front end menu when you can access, access it through the Lamazoco Pro app. Now, if that doesn't work for you straight away, there is another little app, um, uh, the Gap B, which you may have to download. And basically, that's a bridging gap app to make this one work with the machine. So we had to do that to make this work. So now that we've got it up and running, it's so much easier. It will give you all the data of how many shots um, that the machine has done, um, whether it's on standby, um, or heaps of stuff, I mean delivered dose, the temperature of each head, so you can monitor all that very easily. And you don't have to be in your one location to do that. So if we've got this machine, this is gonna go about 10K away from us, we'll still be able to see this information and get an idea of what's happening with that machine. So if the customer tells us there's a problem or the rear steam boiler's going off its head, we can see that on this app as well. So it's great to have a bit of data before we go and service that machine. The other cool thing is the new drip tray. Um, it is quite durable and allows for water to get through nice and easy. And if we remove the drip tray here, and I'll just get rid of a little bit of water there. We do have a new drain box set up, which is great. So we've got um, our anti-pressure um, valves uh, from the pump and also from our group head solenoids. The backflow is coming out of here. That looks like the overpressure of the boiler. And this will be a combined one for the back of the steam taps. Um, now, this drain box typically in a classic was actually really held up by these two pipes. So it's great to see that it's a bit bigger. It's now secured with a, a bracket to the, the chassis. Um, and there's a little bit more space there so that the drip tray doesn't hit it. So over time, that became a little bit challenging. And if you had to change the manifold for the, the back end of the solenoids um, and you didn't quite bend it right, it, it never sat right. But it's great to see that that has been an upgrade. And still underneath is the main um, CPU 
and brain in under here. There'll be, I haven't opened it up, but I'm sure it's got all the solid state relays in there. And we've got access to fuses on the front. So um, if you have to get in there, obviously you want to be really safe, but it's still tucked up nicely in a little box there, which won't get too wet if something goes wrong. A um, little bit of a change on the water there. They've just gone from a, a vertical input rather than the sideways input. Um, and I reckon I'm gonna, gonna make a call here, but this whole area seems a lot more open and there's a couple of extra threaded bolts there. So it wouldn't surprise me if in the future they're planning on allowing the scales to be bolted in here, because that looks like there'd be, a, there'd be plenty of space to have their scale set up added to a Classic S. But I don't know, maybe I'm predicting the future. We'll wait and see. And we've also got the inclusion of the LED lights. And these look like a new set because you can unscrew them. Um, that's definitely a, a nicer way to be able to change them out if a globe does break. So these two new Classic S's are being bench tested for one of our new customers. Um, and it's just part of the process that we do. You wanna make sure that everything works before you get it into a cafe. Uh, make sure you do get that software right, the temperatures to match our coffee, and also the recipes of the uh, buttons that you're gonna have for our normal and our ristrettos and flushes. So then we get on site, it's ready to go for the customers. It also allows us to flush a bit of water through and, and make sure that there's no real manufacturing taste left in these machines. Um, and that will speed up the process of giving a better coffee in the cafe for the customer. So we look forward to doing more information about these machines over time. I hope that they last as well as the original classic. As I said, nearly 15 or more years that thing's been a part of the specialty coffee industry here in Australia. And I'm sure the classic S is gonna do the same, just like all the other Lamazocco models out there. Now, if you've got a question about the new Classic S's, hey, leave it down below in the comments. I'll happily answer those for you. Uh, and if you'd love one of these, perhaps in your cafe and you're in Australia, reach out. We'd love to hear from you and we'll see if we can hook up one of these machines and the beautiful artistic coffee. So thanks very much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.